Thank you. Thank you. My presentation is a little bit different than the others, but I will just say that there is, the world of aviation is an amazing thing, but it's also very carbon fuel intensive. And so that world of people who are aviators just don't always have the vision that people here have is that we really don't, you know, we don't have to be totally infused, you know. So this is a tricky niche to play, but it's a kind of a fun one. I'm going to answer some questions that you might have about aviation in general, general that I think people have, and then I'm going to show you my favorite thing, which is soaring, okay? All right, and my notes over there, so that's bad news. All right. <laughs> All right, carbon footprint awareness. If we can just get awareness out through the aviation industry, I think that's my goal right now as a, as a follower, follower of Miss Greta Thunberg. Yeah. Oops, is that the right button? Okay, if you've thought about solar flight and you read the newspapers and you watch television or whatever you watch, you probably saw the people who are pushing the envelope on solar flight. And this is one that three years ago, this solar powered aircraft made it around the world. These people are pushing the envelope. It was a big adventure. There are 17,000 solar cells on that amazing aircraft, which holds one person, much like the one down here, but its wingspan is actually the size of a seven something seven. What was I going to say? Which one? 747, seven, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's, so it's a quite a large aircraft. Does it say that? I can't see it. Yes. Well, anyway, so these charge during the day to give it the power it needs because it does have an engine. It climbs up during the day when the sun is there and the solar power is there. 29,000 feet is fairly high. And then at nighttime, because they're staying in the air as much as they can, they glide down at nighttime when there's not extra power. The plane could stay up as long as it wanted to. People, unfortunately, need to come down. And there's their around the world voyage. I might have a bigger picture of it. No, I don't. Okay, well, here's another piece that was in the news which was fairly recent, which is a nice sign, is if you are on the East Coast, I think at Martha's Vineyard and some of those East Coast areas where um, people are using smaller planes to go jump, 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 local things, they are bringing online electric powered aircraft. And I don't think you can fly in it today, but it's in the works enough that next summer, if you're on your vacation in that area, you might want to schedule your flights there. Okay, that's the aviation groups. Now, if you're thinking about it, aviation as a whole, it's fossil fuel. Only fossil fuels have that concentrated power of half a billion years of sun, sunlight in, your, you know, in the palm of your hand. And that's pretty much what we're, you know, where we are. And it's a hard air, it's hard nut to crack. How can you change this, All right? But some people are working on it. Um, a lot of your companies and a lot of your, a lot of your companies do have carbon offsets. And that's where you pay for somebody else's trees to be grown in awareness of the fact that you know that you're taking. Um, one is a sustainable alternative jet fuel systems which is in development so it's not there yet but how many years does it take to make these things happen development of standards for electric propulsion aircraft okay so if somebody comes up with the technology the FAA and all our safety systems take a long time to work out what the standards are going to have to be that is very actively happening because it's going to come to a head soon and we know that so it's on the way and here's one that might surprise you, direct routing GPS. For instance, we, when I first learned to fly, which is about 10 years ago, GPS was a new thing in an aircraft. And then gradually all the private aircrafts pick up GPS. So if I want to fly somewhere, we can do that in this country. Not most of the world you can, but in the United States, you can say, I want to go so-and-so, and, and you just go, and your GPS, freed you up from your map cr 
crawling, which we did a lot of chart, you know, make sure you know exactly where you are. Well, what you probably, well, maybe you do realize is that once some, when you get on a large commercial flight and you want to go from here to name a place. Okay, but you pick a spot. Does that flight ever go straight from here to there? No, sometimes it goes whoosh, whoosh. Yes, and you've all been on that. Well, that has to do with the systems and the systems of keeping, keeping us all safe. So there are tracks and roads and routes. So this direct routing idea is working its way through carefully to the system so that the commercial flights will be able to more take advantage of going direct, which is lots of fuel, okay? And the other thing is there's a lot of work on environmentally sustainable hangars and airports. So that's the general aviation world. As individuals, which we all are, all your pilots are also people who for some reason wanted to fly. They love to fly. And there's a few options up there and a lot of choices. Anybody see anything you like? Did you see that flying boat down in the lower corner? Yeah. See these people in the center? Now I want you to look there and just make a prediction maybe of what you think might be the most environmentally feasible, the least dependent on fossil fuel. Got any predictions up there? Who wants to say one? Hang glider. The, hang glider. Hang glider. glider. Anything else? Okay, I looked a few of these up. Hooray for Wikipedia. Some of them I actually know. There you go. Now, this is recreational use, so I'm not talking about distance. I'm talking about time spent. Time spent is a very good commodity here. So for gallons of fuel burned per hour, if you look on the left, that's a P-51 aircraft from World War II, Mustang. And it burns 60 gallons of high octane fuel in an hour. Okay, now that's the big one up there. Um, surprisingly, 30 gallons of pro propane in a balloon flight. What else have we got? Some of, the, some of the traditional aircraft, the 1970s aircraft that a lot of us still fly um, in the center, seven gallons of fuel per hour. Nine for that little helicopter is an amazing revolution because helicopters used to be really intensive. Um, new, some of the newer engines, if you buy a newer aircraft, see those two on the bottom, four gallons of fuel per hour. And there over here, our hang gliders are zero. Let's go, right? <laughs> that's great. Now, I've got a question mark there on the, the gliders because that's the, the part we're going to answer the question to because that's not quite as simple an answer, but it's kind of a fun one. Uh, and I'm going to digress for just a second. Oh, yeah, that's the question. Those are both sailplanes. They're beautiful, aren't they? See those long wings? Yes. Okay, just because you were probably wondering, that Boeing 747 uses 3,600 gallons per hour, which is a scary number, right? It's using about one gallon per second. However, with 500 or more passengers, including their luggage, it's about 7.2 gallons per hour per person which is comparable to those planes you just saw, right? And the other point is it's going 550 miles an hour. So if you actually need to go somewhere, um, it's not too much different than you taking your car. If you have a car and four people in it, this is comparable. So don't be panicking that you shouldn't ever fly because that is not the case. You know, I mean, we all have to do our balances. But just so you know, does that give you anything that you maybe had wondered about? Yeah, I think that's useful to know. Okay, so, <laughs> soaring. Flight in its purest form, nothing but flight. We are just flying. We're not trying to get to grandma's. We're not trying to send you packages, nothing. We're definitely not trying to drop things on your head. There you go. And that's my credit and my crew down there, this is my ground crew. Frank and I own that glider. 
just so you know, it's built in the 1970. It's a 134 glider. It's a 15 meter aircraft, which means 15 meters about 50 feet. Whoops. Where am I? There. Okay. Built in the United States, Elmira, New York, 1970. There you go. There she is getting ready to go. Checking the instruments, getting ready to fly. A little bit about gliding. Okay, I've got five minutes. I'm going to take you fast through a few things. And if you come back at 1230, which I don't even know, we might even be there. I'm going to go long term with the sisters because we hang out together and they have lots of questions. But a glider starts with a toe, 200 foot. Actually, it starts with a group of friends around because we hook each other up and, and it's a community kind of thing. 200 foot rope, do a little formation flying up to two or 3,000 feet. It's basically silent. This is our mystique, except for the rush of the wind. <laughs> After you release the rope, your flight is powered by gravity. It's totally gravity. Gravity's always bringing you down. But the wings are such that the, the air over those wings at speed keeps you up. My glider flies at about 20, at about 33 to 1. So for every 33 feet that we go forward, I only lose one foot. So that's pretty, that's a pretty good angle. You can do a lot with that. We do it with those wingspans between 32 feet and 100 feet. And for ride, glide radio ratios, which are like between 20 to 2 to 1 to 70 to 1 in things that people normally fly. They might cost a little bit more than mine. OK? There you go. Now, what did that cost me? If I'm going up to glide, three gallons of fuel is going to take me up to about 3,000 feet, me and the tow plane. So that's three gallons of fuel for about 20 or 30 minutes. Eh, not so great, right? Let's travel on. There's this thing we do called cloud dancing. I'm a cloud dancer. It's like taking a canoe out on the lake. You're just going up. You want to stay for a while. What you look for is rising air. That bird knows where it is. That bird finds it like this. And when we see a bird, we head over to that bird because that bird is in the right place. Sometimes you can fly circles with them. The air goes up. You try to stay in it. If you are flying in the air, you go up. That's all there is to it. It's the sun's energy. See those? Um, that's kind of what a thermal looks like. You see those top parts all the time, right? That gives us a good clue of where it probably should have rising air. Fly in a circle to stay in it. We do have a vari variometer that tells us when we're going down, when the air's going down. If you're going up, rising, it's going beep, 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 beep. We like it fast. There is one of my flight paths. Probably about two and a half hours of just wandering around. It is, by the way, right in the sky, right over here. I was right up up here, just kind of floating around. That's a track. Can you see that track? Keep your airport in sight. Plan to die when the lift dies down. Plan to die? Plan to <laughs> land when the lift. I don't plan to die until I have to. It's very safe. You gotta, it really is easy to find your landing. You're either gonna come in at this normal rate or you're gonna pull your spoilers and come down at this rate. It gives you huge control over where you're going to land. You don't go around though. I mean, you got one shot at it. Okay, so now we had two or three gallons of fuel per flight. What did I say? Well, that could be two and a half hours. That's pretty good, yeah? Cross-country people, which I am not. Look how this works. This is a flight path, somebody. Hit the, hit the rising air, straight up. Hit over here. Find another thermal. I'm working on that skill. Hit over there. They'll be out all day. And Hannah says, we're about out of time. A lot of things you wish you knew. Two to three gallons of fuel for a 50 mile flight. I can do that. 
two to three gallons of fuel for a thousand kilometer flight. People do it all the time. So just know things like this are possible. They're fun. If you go on vacation, you can take a glider flight. I was going to leave this with a good picture. Maybe I'm not going to get there. Anyway, yes. So just know it can be done and fuel is not everything. There you go. <laughs> Oh yeah. The glider is outside and anybody who wants your picture in the glider. What? Questions? Oh yes. Yeah, because we got time for questions. Yes, do you have any questions? What's the weight weight limit? Um the glider this glider says is I think two hundred two hundred forty. Uh two hundred and forty for for one for your pilot, depending on where you're sitting. In my situation, for a while, I had to put, I had to adjust the other way because I was too light for it. I'm not right now. How about, how about for a two-person A two-person, it's kind of, um, everybody in here could do it. You could, you can fly. I'm looking at us. We can all fly in a glider. There are true answers to that, but, well, I lost it. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, go outside and look. Let's go outside. <laughs>